Hello everyone, Steve here and welcome back to another devlog of Veloce. In today's video I will be telling you how I migrated my project from Godot 3 to 4, because as you already know, Godot 4 is in beta right now. Sure there are crashes, it's not super stable, but because there's a lot to do with Veloce, still it makes sense to write it out with the rough edges of Godot 4 instead of completing the game in 3.5. After putting development of the game to the side for a bit, I delved into other projects, but the truth is, my heart always pulled towards this idea of Veloce, so I decided to bite the bullet of a possible long development cycle and just get on with it and the first step was to move the project to Godot 4. I'm sure there are, or will be, a lot of Godot 3.5 to 4 conversion tools and with this you can convert your project with the click of a button. Just hear me out. When developing a game or an app or any kind of program or even physical things, you see you can go through a project's life cycle like this. You have planning, prototyping, production, testing, release and post-release content. I believe a lot of this is self-explanatory like what planning and releasing is. Obviously planning should include the engine of choice and yes, Godot 3.5 and 4 can be considered different engines in this case, but I believe there's a point in the development cycle where you can and perhaps should change the engine. The point is typically between the prototyping and the production phase. Why? Because with a prototype you're iterating on a bunch of ideas and after a lot of searching, testing, game feeling, hopefully you have something that can be fleshed out into a full game. And here comes the problem. Because you were working on a prototype, you might have cut some corners here and there, and building a full game on a fragile base like this is a recipe for disaster. Basically, I would like to add a stage between prototyping and production in the development cycle, and I will call this phase architecting. In this phase, you should think through your systems and how they interact with each other. This is a common place to cut corners while prototyping. To give you an example from Veloce, in the 3.5 version, the car kept track of what kind of terrain, tarmac, dirt or grass or ice or whatever, you're driving on, when, if you really think about it, the car itself doesn't know what it's on. The only thing that knows what it's driving on is the tires themselves. Sure, you can ask the tire to tell you what it's on, but from the car's perspective it doesn't matter. All the car cares about is sending power to the wheels, steering and suspension. Alright, enough chit chat. Let's get into the Godot 3.5 to 4 conversion. After all, that's why you're here. I followed quite a simple path to migrate my game. I downloaded the latest beta build of Godot 4 from the website, created a new project and just started recreating everything from the old project to the new one. I admit I cut some corners with the model importing for the static objects in my game I just simply drag and drop the content from Godot 3 to 4, but for the scripts I rewrote most of it. And this ties back to my original point about prototyping and architecting a game. By typing out everything once more, I found places where I cut corners, the wheels for example, or, as it turns out, the UI was tied to the car when it really should have been tied to the player agent, as the car itself doesn't need a visual representation of the throttle or the steering input. I used a very handy GitHub gist uh, that I link below. This one describes uh, the changes from Godot 3 to 4. It's of course not fully complete yet, but it should be enough to get you started with the basic stuff that changed between Godot 3 and 4. If something was renamed and I haven't found the answer from the autocomplete of Godot or from the gist or from anywhere on the web, I would just hit up the documentation with F1 and search the same thing in Godot 3 and 4. Sometimes I had to navigate through the inheritance of the nodes, but this usually explained it well. Another benefit of this is that I learned a lot about Godot 3 and 4 while doing this, let's say, hard approach. With this I was able to get my game into a running state again and the fun now can begin in Godot 4. It's really a simple and I admit arduous thing, but in time this will make the game better as it now stands on story solid foundations. If you like this video make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe because in the next video 
we will be talking about how to complete the game fully in one year. This video will be out very, very soon. Have a good one!